<laughs> Greetings, friends. Welcome to the Skill Tree Ability Guide. Whoop whoop. This has been one of my most requested videos, and it's been on my to-do list for a long, long time. Friends, in this video, I'm going to show you how to build a skill tree using my template and logic, but also how you could build one from scratch using your own art style, your own aesthetic, and so on. Of course, I'm going to show you how to integrate it into your game and so that it'll work with your puppets, work with all of your characters, so that this is going to be an awesome piece of logic, but also a functional one that you can get stuck in with right away. Alrighty, friends, let's get stuck in. Woohoo! Alrighty. So, friends, the first thing we're going to get stuck in with is just checking that this skill tree actually works. So, for example, it needs to work in such a way that when I unlock an ability, it will then unlock sort of the, the abilities that are lower down in that particular tree. So at this point, I can go this way or that way. But I can't, for example, go over here. You see we're not unlocking here. I can't unlock this one. I can't unlock this one because it's not connected via the unlocked abilities. So if I go here, this will now be unlocked. But of course, this one won't be unlocked. But I can go here. I can go here. So on and so forth. And of course this works in my archery skill tree as well. This has kind of just got a slightly different vibe. I wanted to also experiment with different art styles. The logic of these is exactly the same. The only difference is that these have got the cool sort of carved in stone look and these I just painted. Alrighty friends, so let's get stuck in with a little bit of the logic now. Sweet, so let's head into edit mode. And don't be intimidated by the number of microchips. It's actually just a lot of the same logic that's been copy and pasted every time. So, first we're going to go into our skill tree over here, and there's nothing particularly fancy. I've just got a remote control, controller sensor, that switches between basically the skill tree being active and the skill tree not being active and us possessing or force possessing our puppet. There's nothing fancy here, just a camera, this which depossesses the puppet. A variable over here, which is very important, the skill points variable. Then just the number display, which I've got in the top left over here and then just the skill background which is this white sort of area at the bottom just so that you can see your abilities. Then when I press the touchpad it's going to switch between this stage which is us looking at the skill tree and the stage over here which is just us possessing the puppet and being able to use our abilities and test them out. Okay sweet. Next thing we're going to look at is actually what happens on the inside of these particular bits of microchips and these nodes if you will in the skill tree. So first of all, we're going to open it up, and you're going to see also that I've named this A1. This is B1, this is A2, this is A3, this is A4, B1, B2, B3, B4, and then in the middle it's AB1, AB2. I recommend naming your nodes, and at the same time your variables, so the name of the node and the name of the variable is the same, based on a sort of organized system. You could name them after each ability, but I feel like it might be a little bit tricky because it's just quite easy if you've got like A1 here, A2, A3. Um, that, that way, if you change the name of the ability, for example, then it doesn't mess with your whole system. It's kind of like the name of the variable is depending on the position of the node rather than the ability itself. So the ability description and all these things you can change as you desire, but it doesn't mess with your logic and system that is underlying it. So that's just a bit of advice. You can, of course, name it, you know, whatever you'd like. Sweet. So I've got two nodes over here. This first node is activated when we hover over our particular um, node. So, for example, I'm hovering over it, and now the charge swing is displayed. I can see the title. I can see the description, and it works for all of these guys over here. So the way that this works is a little bit sneaky because you can't see it at the moment. But if we look close, we can see sort of an invisible ball. So first I'm going to go show and hide, preview invisibility, then I'm going to go tools because I've actually hidden this. I'm going to scope in and I'm going to make this no longer hidden. Okay, sweet. So now when I go into here, I can actually see our grab sensor and I'll scope out quickly. And I'll go back to our microchip and it works so that when we hover over this particular area, so we're not actually hovering over that uh, paint, we're actually hovering over a hidden ball, but it still works even though it's invisible. So we're hovering over it and we've attached that little grab sensor. And when we hover, it's going to show us the title and the description. When we grab this particular uh, node, then it's going to activate our second node over here. And that's our unlock node. 
then our unlock logic works as follows. Firstly, we just put down a variable modifier with the operation type get and its skill points. And what happens here is it's going to check if skill points is more than one. So in other words, skill points needs to be at least one in order to give this a positive output. So if we had zero skill points, this wouldn't be producing an output and so it wouldn't be working. We don't have to do anything fancy with calculators. You just do it straight like that. Then the next thing we check is, does A1, in other words, this node that we're talking about, has it already been unlocked? No, it hasn't. Therefore, let us activate our timeline. So basically the way that this works is, is A1 equal to 1? No, it's not. That's what this NOT gate does. Then we activate our timeline. So the reason that we have this is so that we can't unlock an ability multiple times and we just spam all of our skill points in one ability that unlocks itself again each time. So these are just the two things we need for the basic starting out uh, position, the starting out node. Then inside our timeline, there's nothing fancy here. This is just a keyframe that changes it from gray to red or from gray to green as we've got over here. And this just makes it keep changes. It's the, it's the same as this keyframe. It just makes it go keep changes. And then over here, we've got a variable modifier, which adds negative one. In other words, when we unlock an ability, we lose one skill point. And then here, we've got a variable modifier for A1 that sets it to one. So by default, as we can see here, it's zero or false or not unlocked. When we have unlocked it, it will then set it to one or true, or it has been unlocked. And that allows it to work with our little dude over here. Alrighty. So that's what goes into one particular node. Now I'm going to show you what goes into the nodes that follow it. So the starting node is the simplest because it doesn't actually depend on anything else. But this node, for example, depends on A1 being unlocked. And this node over here depends on being unlocked by either this node or that node. But let's go to this one first. So the first bit of logic that's different, aside from, of course, changing the variable involved, is that we've just got this little variable modifier over here. So now let's go from the top. We've got skill points. Do we have at least one? Yes. Has skill A2 been unlocked? No, it hasn't. Therefore, it can be unlocked. And now, has A1 been unlocked? So in other words, the use of this logic here makes it so that you can't unlock this node over here unless you've unlocked the first node. So let's check it out. If I try and unlock it here, whoa, it's not going to work. But if I unlock this guy first, then it'll work. So that's all you have to do, friends. All you have to do is add in this little tiny piece of logic to check if the previous one has been unlocked. Also, it only has to work for the previous one. So for example, over here, I don't have to have like four of these that are like, are oh, is A3 and A2 and A1 unlocked? That's unnecessary because each step of the way you make it so that this one can only be unlocked by that one, this one can only be unlocked by that one, and this one can only be unlocked by that one. So in other words, you don't have to do like a whole copy paste of all these various things each time because each step depends on the other. Okay, sweet. The next bit of logic is this AB logic over here, which depends not on just the one before, but it can actually be either or. So you can go down this branch of the skill tree or this branch of the skill tree and end up here. So the difference here is we're going to unlock logic. And now we've got is A2 unlocked, is B2 unlocked, and we connect it with an OR gate. And it's as easy as that, friends. So it checks, is A2 or B2 unlocked? Okay, sweet, then it'll work. So now I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go here. A1 and B1 are unlocked. If I go here, nope, sorry, these dudes aren't unlocked yet. If I go here though, now it's gonna work. Similarly, if I just go down this side of the skill tree, I can unlock it without having to get uh, A2, because I've got B2 over here. Sweet friends. Now, the next kind of uh, separation that I want to talk about, because this is an example of where um, nodes sort of uh, multiply. They go from just being one solid branch to two branches. I want, and I want to talk about one node going into many. Now, in terms of uh, what... what um, this entails it's not all that much different from a regular node going into the next node but the one thing that you're going to want to think about is your naming convention once again because for example this is row c 
But of course, C is not going to be splitting into, for example, C, D, because I don't have a D row. So now what I've named this is C lowercase a 1 and C lowercase b 1. So the difference here is just like, the only real difference here is how you organize the naming system. Because of course, for C a 1, it's going to work just like a normal node normal second tier node if you will because it's going to check has c1 been unlocked of course this is c1 that's all cool and it's the same here this one is going to check has c1 been unlocked so friends that's really all there is to understanding this logic and of course once again this one here c2 works just like these guys because it's sort of like a, a an adjoining node rather than a separating node and it's either ca2 or CB2 must be unlocked in order to get this over here. Okay, friends, so now we've figured out a bunch of logic, but how do we actually incorporate the skill tree logic into our actual game? As in, how do we get an ability unlocked on our skill tree and then make it so that our characters can actually use them? Friends, all you need is two gadgets. Let's go to my little dude over here. Okay, so I go into my little controller logic and I put down a microchip here. And really, all you need is an AND gate and a variable modifier. So when I press triangle, for example, it's going to check, have I pressed triangle? OK, sweet. And is A1, which is our first ability over here, if that is equal to 1, in other words, it's been unlocked, and I'm pressing triangle, then it's going to work. And that's all there is to it, friends. You need a variable modifier. Operation type is get. And this just checks if it's 1 or 0. So normal playthrough. I haven't unlocked it, so when I'm pressing triangle, as you can hear, nothing is happening. However, if I go back to the skill screen or the skill tree, and I unlock it, now my ability has been unlocked. And that's of course because A1 is set to 1. Because if we go back into our logic, in our timeline, this little variable modifier over here is what makes it set to 1. Alrighty, friends. The next thing I'm sure you're wondering is, how do we actually build some new nodes onto our tree here? So now that you're eager to make a new node, let's get stuck in. I'm going to put on a quick grid snap. I'll make it 1 8 shall we say. Make a copy of this template. Turn grid snap off now. I'm going to go into this painting part. Make sure that you've got surface snap turned on. And then I'll... Do a little bit of a drawing here, a little bit of a painting. Not bad, actually, not bad. So here we have our star. So the things I'm going to want to change when I make a new ability is, of course, the name of the, the folder. So let's call this one A5. Alrighty. Then I'm going to change this. I'm going to make it A5. Then I'm going to change the name of it, the name of our move. So I'm going to call it star slash. Then I'm going to change the name of our description. I'm going to call this an, whoops. I'm going to call this an awesome move. Very descriptive. Then I'm going to go into an unlock logic. Then variable modifier, I'm going to change this to our node in question, in other words, A5. But it's also going to be depending on the previous node in order to be unlocked. So I'm going to make a copy of this. I'm going to make it A4. So in order to unlock A5, you need to have A4. And I'm just going to connect this to number C, or uh, input C. Then I'm going to go to our timeline. OK, cool. This looks all good. The one thing I'm going to change here is that A5 is set to 1. In other words, true. And that makes it an unlocked ability. OK, sweet. So let's see what happens. I'm just going to place it in our tree. Whoops. I'm just going to place it in our tree. I'm not going to put the little line yet because I just want to see if it works. OK, sweet. Oh, what? the first thing I notice is that I can't actually see it. So that's an easy fix. We'll just go to our camera and we'll tilt it down ever so slightly. That looks good. And now it's kind of there, but that'll work for now. Okay, sweet, so one, we go two, but now I want it. Ah, too eager. Got to get number four first. Number four, and 
Number five, we just unlocked star slash. So now we can see that that works. I'm just going to make an adjustment to the old camera once again. Okay, very nice. Then I'm going to copy this guy so that we've got like our little adjoining line and it looks very, you know, professional. It works. And if you're using my system, then what you'll do is you'll go to the previous node, which is A4, and you're going to go to you're going to go to the unlock logic. Then you're going to go to the timeline, the unlock timeline. You can turn this grid snap off again, by the way. And then you'll go to this keyframe over here, and you'll go okay, sweet. You'll go here, make it 200%. You'll make it red. Then you'll delete this keyframe under it, the big one. Make a copy, make it a little bit bigger, and then you just go keep changes. So friends, that's all you'll do. And now let's try again. We unlock the first one, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, and our new one, star slash. And then we would make a new timeline on our character and make it activate in the same one that in the same way that A1 is activated. Friends, that's all there is to it. You can make your own new node. You can make it coming off the side here. You can make it sort of another branching node over here. You can make it uh, split and then come back together like we've got over here. And friends, that's all there is to it. And if we look into C1, you'll see the logic is exactly the same for our ranged abilities. The only difference here is that instead of having an invisible little ball that we've got here, we actually don't have a painting at all. We've just got the, the old... Um, basically the ball I took it and I just started carving out of it myself so that's what this little template looks like if I wanted to make changes to this for example I would just go like cha 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 and I'd start making some little carvings and all sorts of crazy things going on here so, and so on and so forth uh, that kind of looked like the ghost of Tsushima logo for a second there. Um, but yeah friends so that's all there is to it if you have any questions please let me know I really uh, I really enjoy responding to comments and getting involved with the community it's so much fun uh, one thing is if you look here and you're like oh bro what's happening where's the microchip all you have to do is ungroup and then it looks just like every other node over here the reason I make it a group is just so that you can copy it all as one thing when you move the template. But yes, friends, really that is all there is to it. Um, it is quite a bit, so once again, let me know if you have any queries, and I'll be happy to help you out with those. Friends, I really enjoyed this, and I'm also really looking forward to seeing all the like RPGs and crazy progression-based games that you make with skill trees like this. Uh, I feel like it's something I've wanted to make for a long time, and I'm glad that I've finally made it. I'm going to be releasing this soon. If it isn't released by the time I release the video, um, I'm sure it'll be up very soon after. Okay, sweet. Thank you so much, friends. The, uh, the In Dreams link will be in the description below. Thank you so much, friends, and catch on the flip-flop. Peace out.